one of the things that I try to highlight in my work is that in many ways uh, the experience of the Civil War is more akin to Vietnam than we might think. Now, at first blush, of course, it, they seem like dramatically different conflicts. And I don't want to be uh, overgeneralizing this because they are dramatically different wars in dramatically different settings. Uh, but the, th the thread that is common is that uh, opposition during the Civil War was quite widespread as it was during the, the Vietnam era. And not only was it widespread, but it had a real impact on the development of politics. Uh, in fact, scholars will say that during the Civil War, uh, the opposition movement could have triumphed politically in 1864 if events on the battlefield hadn't turned in the Union favor. So if that had occurred and the Union had lost, we would all see dramatically the parallels with Vietnam. But as it is, I have to sort of tantalizingly remind you that the levels of opposition are similar. But I would also say this, that uh, the reality is that we often think of Vietnam as the aberration, as the unusual American experience, and something like World War II uh, as, uh, as the norm, uh, as a, a nation pulling together uh, as one uh, on behalf of what seems like a good cause without any uh, uh, sort of objections. Uh, and the reality is that if you look at the history of American conflicts, opposition is the norm uh, from the very beginnings of the revolution in which we had a huge number of people who were loyalists who did not want to join the revolution up through later wars. Uh, opposition is in fact the norm in American society uh, and something that appears as a unitary sense of conscience. That is the aberration. So my attempt to draw the parallels was to remind people that ultimately the Civil War should be thought of in similar terms.